Welcome back to the Gentleman's Gazette. In today's video, we discuss the 13 most overrated and underrated dress shirts and shirt details. For many men, dress shirts are an essential part of their wardrobe, and it's probably one of the first things they put on in the morning before they go to work. There's an endless choice between colors, fits, collar styles, cuff styles, and lots of other details that you can and must choose. At the moment, I have about 100 dress shirts in my collections, and over the years I had many more, I sold them, got new ones, and so I learned a thing or two about dress shirts. Today, I wanna share with you what I found are the most overrated and underrated things. So let's start with the overrated shirts. Number one, pink shirts. In my experience, pink shirts are a hit or miss. They can look well if you have a good tan and if the pink is quite light and pastel -y. They look really bad if it's a strong pink and if you choose the wrong accessories. Most people don't associate the color pink with masculinity, and so if you wear that color, you definitely make a statement. In my experience, pink works against you and is overrated when the only purpose of wearing it is to get attention. On the other hand, if you wear a very pale pink shirt because it's part of the combination, it's softer than the white shirt and it just shows that you are very comfortable with the way you wear it, then it can actually work in your favor. If you decide to wear pink shirts, try to stay with solid colors that are very pale or pastel -y. Avoid bold pink stripes because that's over the top in terms of color and pattern. Also, if you wanna wear pink shirts, make sure to tone down the other items in your outfit, specifically the accessories. The second most overrated thing are the extreme cutaway collars. Even though these white collars have been quite popular with brands like Ralph Lauren, they are still around today and people wear them a lot. It's definitely an extreme look and if you wear a neckwear of any form, it just doesn't work in your favor. If you go with a regular necktie, you can see the band on the side and it just looks odd unless you tie an extremely big belt hoose knot which ends up in a very short tie which looks odd too. If you wear a bow tie, on the other hand, the bow tie usually covers up the area of the collar, so you can't really see the extreme cutaway style of the collar. When you wear a suit with a dress shirt and a collar and a tie, you typically create Vs or inverted Vs. When you have this extreme cutaway collar, it kind of throws off that balance, and usually it looks odd. I definitely have a few extreme cutaway collar shirts in my wardrobe, but I find that I usually only wear them without a tie or with a bow tie, because with a regular tie, it just looks weird. The third most overrated dress shirts are non-iron shirts. I get it, most men think of ironing shirts as a huge pain in the ass. So of course, if someone promises you a non-iron shirt, you are naturally interested in it. The problem is most dress shirts are made out of cotton and cotton inherently wrinkles. To prevent cotton from wrinkling after it's being laundered, you need to really work on the fiber itself and treat it with many chemicals, including formaldehyde. Now when you do that, even a high-end cotton doesn't stay soft and luxurious anymore. It becomes cheap and also less absorbent. It almost has a plasticky feel and touch. And the problem is when you wash the shirt a dozen or two dozen times, the non-ironing properties are literally washed away and you still end up having to iron your shirt in order to get a clean, crisp dress shirt. The only company that I've found that provides a shirt that stays wrinkle resistant for a long time, which doesn't mean it's non-iron, but you need to iron it less, and it's from Eaton in Sweden. Unfortunately, these shirts cost about $300 each or more, which makes them unaffordable for most men out there. In collaboration with the high-end Swiss shirt cloth maker Alumo, they've developed an exclusive process that allows them to create a wrinkle-resistant fabric that has fewer chemicals than a cup of black tea. I do have one of their shirts and I've had it for years and it really does a good job. So when I travel and I need something where I know I may not have the chance to iron, I bring it along. Otherwise, I stick with regular shirts because I can get a custom shirt that costs less than the off-the-rack shirt from Eaton. If you want to learn more about dress shirts, you can check out our video series here. And to learn how to iron a shirt like a pro at home, please check out this video series. The fourth most overrated dress shirt details are visible monograms. Originally, monograms on dress shirts or garments were used to identify the owner. Oftentimes, people had staff 
and shirts were usually white, so it was hard to determine whose shirt it was. A little monogram in a shirt told the valet whose it was, and so everyone would have the proper shirt that they could wear and that would fit. In recent years, online custom shirts and regular custom shirts have become increasingly popular, which provided the option to add monograms. Now, for a lot of people, this is kind of a status symbol, and they want to show off that they're wealthy enough to afford a custom-made shirt or a shirt that was made for them. Now, back in the day, a shirt monogram was stitched either by hand or by machine at around your waistband. So it was never visible to anyone. It was simply there for the people who did the laundry and your valet. Today, people are placing the monogram on their shirt cuff, ideally in a contrasting thread, so everyone can see that they can buy a bespoke shirt. In my opinion, it's gaudy on the one hand, and showing off is never part of a gentleman's personality. Now, there's nothing wrong with having a general shirt monogram. If you wanna have that, I suggest to get it in the original place, which is just on the left side on the waistband, around that level. And you can also get it tone in tone. So if you have a white shirt, you can get a white monogram. So only you know it's there and no one else. Or maybe you could even have it monogrammed on the inside of your collar band. That way no one will ever see it other than you and your partner. And it's a nice thing to have, but it's not showy at all and very gentlemanly. The fifth most overrated dress shirt styles are really bold printed patterns. Now, I'm not talking about stripes or classic patterns like checks. I'm talking about bold floral and paisley prints, which have become increasingly popular in recent years. Technological advances and changes in fashion have allowed dress shirts to become a lot louder and more vibrant. I think it's a trend that won't stick around, and it's something maybe that is popular now, but probably 10, 15 years from now, other things will have come and gone, but your solids, your checks and your stripes will remain in your wardrobe, you'll be able to wear them, whereas the floral print is probably something that will look very dated at that point. The sixth most overrated thing is dress shirts that are meant to be worn untucked, especially when you combine them with a jacket. Honestly, I see it all the time, where I go to parties or at the airplane catalog, people promote and wear dress shirts that are not tucked in. Now, traditionally, a dress shirt was cut, so it was longer in the back and front, so it was less likely to come untucked. It was also shorter on the sides, so it looked extremely unflattering when it was untucked. For example, if you want a summery casual linen shirt that you can wear untucked, you want a hem that is cut evenly. However, there are a lot of people out there who want to wear dress shirts, but want to appear more casual, and then they wear these untucked shirts in combination with a jacket, and it just looks weird. Why? Because the shirt sticks out from underneath the buttoning point, which is never advantageous. Personally, I don't like untucked shirt at all, and even my summery shirts are ones that I can tuck in that I wear with a belt, because it provides a visual contrast that is pleasing to the eye, and my long torso can be shortened by creating a visually longer leg line. So if you wanna wear shirts untucked, I suggest to go with polo shirts and to stick with tucking shirts when you go with dress shirts. If you want to go with untucked shirts, keep it to very casual occasions and never pair it with a jacket. The seventh most overrated dress shirt is the jewel tone dress shirt. What I mean by that is very extreme and bold colors that I usually see worn by men who are very new into clothing, who think they need to make a bold statement with the choice of shirt color. So they end up getting a vibrant ruby red shirt, something that is extremely pink or turquoise or blue. It's very vibrant and maybe suitable for a techno party, but it's nothing you should ever add to a classically inspired wardrobe. Why? Because they're too bold, they're hard to combine with other accessories, and they simply scream cheap and I don't know what I'm doing. The eighth most overrated thing in dress shirts are short-sleeved dress shirts. If you live in a warmer climate or you suffer from hot summers, you may be prone to wear a short-sleeved shirt underneath your jacket. The problem is you won't see the sleeves and so it would always look weird and orphaned because traditionally a jacket looks better if you show a little bit of shirt cuff that usually matches the amount of shirt color you see in the back of your jacket. On top of that, wearing a short-sleeved dress shirt with a necktie makes you look like a little schoolboy. In my opinion, there's not a real place for short-sleeved dress shirts in a men's wardrobe because if you wanna go casual, opt 
for a polo shirt or maybe a Henley shirt. Both of them are short sleeved. You can get them with a the proper collar, even like a shirt style collar. And there's something that just look good and are meant to be worn that way. A dresser on the other hand usually has sleeves. It has the button front. And if it's too hot, you can just roll up your shirt sleeves and you can roll them back down. So actually there's no real need for a short sleeve dress shirt unless maybe you're a four year old boy. Now let's talk about the most underrated things in men's dress shirts. Number nine would be pastel colored shirts. Most men out there buy white shirts and light blue shirts. Now, while white and blue build the foundation of any gentleman's dress shirt closet, pastel colors can really help to add a note of individuality to your outfits without bringing over the top. When I say pastel, I mean tones that are very soft and just have a hint or a hue of color that is different than white. For example, you can go with a very pale yellow, a pale green, a pale pink, pale lavender. And these tones help to tie together accessories that maybe have a stronger version of green than your shirt. And overall, they're very easy to combine. They make your outfits, your suits, and your accessories look different without being over the top. So people won't be able to pinpoint that it was your ivory colored pastel shirt that made the combination work better, but they notice that you look better. But you can also wear it with much more casual combinations, such as a sport coat or a tweed coat, where a white dress shirt would be too stark and would provide too much contrast. 10, another underrated thing in dress shirts are bold stripes. Now stripes are very popular in dress shirts for men, particularly some that come in blue on a white background or maybe in white on a blue background. You can find them in slightly different sizes, going all the way from super fine to medium to bolder, but it's very hard to find a bolder stripe in a different color or a bolder stripe that is just much bigger. Usually you have to go custom, but once you have shirts like that in your wardrobe, it's really easy to spice up that solid suit that you have and that you just want to look different than wearing it with a plain white or solid light blue shirt. For example, the shirt I'm wearing here right now has a very bold stripe in a somewhat softer green and white. And because of that, it works quite well with any kind of green jacket, but I can also wear it with a navy blue jacket. It makes the whole ensemble look very different. The key to wearing a bowler shirt like that is toning down the rest. So I'm wearing a summery jacket here that is a solid mid-gray with a model tone, as well as a kind of tie in a muted turquoise with muted orange tones that are picked up by the pocket square. I also like a shirt with maybe yellow stripes and a wider spacing or maybe orange stripes. And while the shirts are not as versatile as maybe a solid white, ivory or light blue shirt, they still have a place in a gentleman's wardrobe. So if you have a lot of solid jackets in your wardrobe, I strongly suggest you invest in a few bolder striped shirts. If you don't know where to start, I suggest to go with a white and blue stripe that is bolder, that can be more vibrant because that's closest to what most people are comfortable with. But then down the line, I really encourage you to be a little more daring and go with different colors, such as green, orange, or yellow. 11, another underrated thing are Winchester shirts. What I mean by that is a shirt with a contrasting white color on a different colored shirt body. It can either be a solid such as gray or it can be a stripe, but the mix of that white color gives you the resemblance of a classic white dress shirt. And when you wear a jacket, you only have that V that shows a little bit of the stripe. You can either have the cuffs be matching the color in white or have the cuffs match the shirt body. The choice is up to you. Personally, I prefer having matching cuffs and collar that contrast the shirt body. Which is the shirts are particularly suited for business wear. They're not casual wear. And you can even wear it with a formal morning coat ensemble. You can wear it to a wedding or to just a board meeting. So if you don't have a Winchester shirt in your wardrobe yet, I suggest you invest in one. Um, start out maybe with a solid color such as light blue. And later on, you can advance to stripes, maybe checks or other things. During the summer, the most underrated thing are open weave cloth dress shirts. Most shirts in the market today come in a medium heavy weave that is quite tight. 
However, during the summer, an open weave shirt is much more pleasant to wear because it allows to get a lot more air to your skin. That way you're less prone to sweating, you stay cooler and you're just more comfortable. The problem is most over the rack shirts do not offer those fabrics and even a lot of custom makers don't offer those fabrics. So if you go to Italy into areas where it's quite warm, all the little bespoke shirt makers will have those fabrics because they know how comfortable they can be and they're just a godsend. Personally, I have a range of different open weave dress shirts and sometimes they're so open that my chest hair pokes through. So they're nothing for a super formal board meeting, but that aside, they're extremely comfortable in all kinds of summer situations where you wanna stay as cool as possible. Pair that with a fresco jacket or other open weave suiting fabrics and you stay a lot cooler than in a regular suit with a regular dress shirt. Last but not least, one of the most underrated things in dress shirts are pin collar shirts. In the 90s, when power suits were popular, a lot of people would wear tab collars and pin collars. Now, in recent years, they've fallen somewhat out of favor, but it's a great way to add a different accessory to your outfit that elevates your tie knot and makes you look a little more debonair. So what is a pin collar shirt? Pin collar shirts are essential for collar bars because with those, you can just pin a hole into your shirt collar. If you have a safety collar pin, you can in theory just punch a hole into any kind of shirt collar. And while that works, I suggest to get a pin collar shirt because you can use it with a bar, you can even use it with a clip and particularly with a safety pin, it always looks good and the different angle of your tie just looks very, very sophisticated and different from what other people wear, but it's not a very loud and ostentatious way, but a very subtle, understated and elegant way. If you're looking for collar bars, collar pins and collar clips, you can get those in our shop here. And we also have different guides and explain how to wear them and what to do. If you wanna buy a pin collar shirt, I suggest you get a custom shirt, even online custom shirt makers offer them today. It's just important to place the hole at the right height. And ideally you want it very close to the edge of the shirt collar. Otherwise you can't wear it with certain items such as a safety pin. And it usually looks best when it's kind of in the middle of the collar in a vertically. That way you just get the nice look. You still have enough space for your tie knot and Overall, you create a harmonious outfit that is quite unique. In today's outfit, I'm wearing a bold dress shirt with white stripes in white and a medium green. I keep the rest of the shirt more subtle. It's a double cuff paired with a medium spread collar. The tie is turquoise and orange, which is in general quite loud, but it's a wool chalet tie, so the tones are much more subdued. The pocket square picks up those colors, ties it all together, and the jacket in this case must be a solid because otherwise the tie and the shirt are too loud. It's a fresco single breasted jacket that's part of a suit and you've probably seen me wearing it before. The pants are also part of a suit which are dark blue, it is a little lighter than navy which works well with the lighter tones of the jacket and the shirt. For the socks I kept it muted with a navy and blue shadow stripe sock from Fur Belvedere. And for my shoes, I picked up a brown tone that works well with the orange tone in my wool shawl tie to tie it all together. My cufflinks are lapis lazuli with sterling silver, and so is my pinky ring. They pick up the colors of the socks as well as the pants and just add to an harmonious overall outfit. I paired it all with a cornflower boutonniere, but honestly, the whole combination would probably be even better without it. Why? Because the shirt and the tie are already so bold that you simply don't need a boutonniere in this instance.